Okay, folks, good morning. Been a lot of questions about everything because there's so much out there now. I want to share with you about the saddle that we sell. And a, a lot of people really like them. And it took a while to get it designed the way I wanted it. And it's a wade tree, rawhide covered, which means that you can rope anything you want with it. If you'll notice, it's leather on the horn, not rubber. And that way we can slide the rope like a clutch and brake system. The big deal for me was right here. The dish in the seat protects your thoracic part of your spine. And that's where your tailbone gets smacked on seats that aren't made well. So you can literally sit down in this seat and be more centered. The Cheyenne roll for cowboys and people, trail riders, you can grab a hold of the back of it just for a whole lot of reasons, getting on, getting off, going down a really steep hill. Uh, if you have a horse that blows up and bucks on you, by the time you get here, it's too late, so don't worry about that. And the horn, the diameter of the horn makes it where you can't, if you grab the horn, it's too wide for most people to grab and be secure with. That's why the rope strap, and if you put a lariat on here, you can grab the rope instead of the saddle horn. Now the saddle horn, Another feature is there used to be a post horn which was popular and it was flat and it was this much diameter. So what happened was a lot of guys ended up dallying on the top up here and it would pop off and that's very painful for everybody. So I dropped it just enough so that when you're dallying the angle of your hand complements the angle of the saddle horn and you want to dally on the bottom. So the farther down you dally the less pressure there is on the shoulders of a horse. And remember, when you dally, and say you're roping a yearling or a cow, you're moving, so you slow it down in a straight line. That's what we typically do on a ranch. And for those of you that don't know, I'd just like to share with you that in the team roping world, it's rubber on the horn because the bottom line is it's a speed event. So they don't mess with sliding the rope and slowing down and getting ready and prepared and all that. They don't do it. They rope, they turn left. Now for the slick fork, that's it. one of the differences is, is team ropers run straight, turn left, run straight, turn left. And the weight of the cattle they're roping in the professional world, they have a, li a weight limit on the steers because they don't want them too heavy. In the ranch, it can be anywhere from a three-day-old calf to a gummer cow. So the wade tree and the slick horn makes the difference between putting too much pressure. If you turn left roping in the pasture and a cow hits the end of your rope on rubber and if the cow's going straight and you turn left what you do is you put all the pressure on the right shoulder of your horse. Okay, no matter how tight your back cinch is, you rope a 1,200 pound cow, it's going to rock. So this is why we don't have eight inches of space in the back cinch. But the main point of my story is, is that the bigger the diameter here, the less friction in slowing a cow down. And that's kind of what we, we go for as cowboys. Now the wade tree for me, as you've seen in the previous video, this, I don't have a bunch of saddles. This works on all my horses, and all I do is make up the difference in pads, which was quite an eye-opener for a lot of people. And um, just so you understand, it's got a back cinch, the breast collar comes with it, and the breast collar, if you're a trail rider, if a saddle slips, the breast collar is made with this strap, and what it means is that if this is on the horse and this is between the front legs and the saddle slips, it can't go all the way under their belly because this strap won't allow it. That's why we put a breast collar on the horse. Then of course we live in the steep country so you want it to go up and down and sideways and all that. But anyway, this will keep your saddle from rolling in case you didn't know that. Now we'd like to thank Putin for the background noise. beware the stirrup leathers you got to give your inseam to Deb when you order it because 
we've got six foot four down to uh, munchkins. This guard is something I invented to keep a rope or anything foreign like hog wire to go inside of here. This is where a lot of ICU trips are made because of that. So I came up with this piece of leather and that it doesn't allow something to get caught in there. If you have taps, you don't have to worry about it because it's already covered. And uh, that's the big picture on this saddle. So there you go. All right, folks, the bars, everybody talks about the bars, quarter horse, 92, 98. I don't, I don't know nothing about them. All I know is that these fit all horses. And if you line up with the rosettes, this particular bar is eight inches across. Hard up, not counting the sheepskin. So if that helps you decide something, if you got a mutton weathered horse, you're gonna be able to put your hand under here. If you're riding a high withered thoroughbred, you're gonna put a pad and a blanket on and you're gonna be able to put your hand under here. It's blankets and pads, my friends. Now, these, these uh, saddles come with a warranty for 30 miles or 30 minutes, they will not leak. After that, you're on your own. Thank you. Okay, folks, now this saddle is this exact same saddle, except this one's a year older. And as of to date, it has not leaked. So that's pretty impressive. But the first thing I wanna show you is that my friend in New Mexico, his name is Davidson. I saw his saddle the other day. I took him a ranch horse. I mean, a really, really nice guy. But what I want him to see is that the distance from the blanket to the bottom of the horn is three and a quarter inches. Okay, I want him, I want you, my friend, to measure your same thing after the saddle's on the horse to the bottom of the base of your horn. And what you're gonna find is that yours is higher because you went for the big open gullet, which is understandable because people wanna be able to ride all different horses. Well, the truth is, is that gullet is so high that now when you dally, it would be like dallying up here on this horn and because of fulcrum and leverage, it has more tension on the shoulder of the horse because it's higher up. The lower you can dally, which is a big reason why we ride wades, is so you can keep the amount of pressure on the back to a minimum. The other thing is, is we ride a 5 8 rigging and that puts more saddle out front and room behind the elbow and it complements dallying because it's behind the horn. So that's something to remember for you guys at rope. Now, the strap, you can see where he's been dallying. Okay, on my own personal saddle, I took the leather away from here and it put a groove that exposed my, my swell. That's not good. So all you do is undo the horn wrap get it wet and then put it back on and make sure you've got this lip around there that he has and that way you don't tear up your saddle horn you're just wearing out your mule hide so that's a big deal and the other thing is is like I told you this horse has typical withers and there's daylight underneath the fork the thing I told you earlier about the saddle horn is what we do is we hold the lariat. Go ahead and turn him around, Chris. We hang on to the lariat instead of grabbing the horn and the lariat has a little give to it. So when we're going down a really steep hill or need to grab it, it's, it's the perfect size for your hand to be around it to grab it. That's why we're set up this way. Now I, after being in Arizona, came up with the, my own personal preference of tying it off here, which gives it more strength when you grab it and it keeps it flatter for me because it's 60 foot and they use shorter ropes over there, is it keeps it flat on my leg to not hang up in the brush when I'm going through the brush. So that's the mechanics of why all this is what it is. Now just to share with you, these are classic old school taps 
and that's like owning a 55 Chevy so he, he's not a bragger but I'm just telling you he's got pretty cool deal there that's pretty much it thank you